It's been awfully quiet since I made that Crunchwrap Supreme video. I was thinking a phone call would ring any moment from Food Network offering me a TV show for a decade, maybe two, with a nice salary of 900,000 to maybe a million dollars a year, but it's been quiet. Some people said that I may have gone too hard making fun of uh, some people on the Food Network. That might have been it, it might have been a turnoff. They don't want to bully on there, right? So this time, nothing but good vibes. Happy times, good vibes. That's what I'm shooting for. Those Food Network people, they love it. Their, uh, their single most important demographic are stay-at-home moms that their, their life is already swirling around the drain. Chronic depression. They don't want to see an angry guy on TV. They want happiness, you know, forced into their face so that they know there might be good times around the corner. So my main goal here is to relate to housewives, right? These stay-at-home moms that do nothing but do what? Watch soap operas all day, lifetime, and drown their sorrows in store-bought ice cream. And I don't think I'm talking to myself here when I bring up the fact that ice cream is a real crapshoot. I mean, you got, the you got the gold standards, you know, you got the vanillas, the chocolates, and the strawberries. But it, when you start going a little bit wild, you know, once you go off the reservation a little bit, you can get some really cool combinations, but they always fuck it up somehow. Take, for example, one of my favorite little flavors here, Moose Tracks, right? A lot of companies have different Moose Tracks, and it's great because it's, it's, it's peanut butter cups and vanilla ice cream. And then here's where they swoop in and just ruin the whole thing. The whole recipe's thrown in the garbage. They use the namesake here, Moose Track Fudge. Who the fuck likes fudge? I am not an 85 year old woman. I don't want to eat fudge. I hate fudge. And I'm starting to think when you eat it, it is so like waxy. This fudge that they claim is so freaking good that they're gonna put the name of it on there. I'm 90% sure it's just filler. This is just, some crap that they throw in there so that they don't have to add extra peanut butter cups. Remember that video a long time ago of that guy that has like, my dream job, he just tastes ice cream all day, that's all he does? I'm gonna bisect this like he does in the thing so I can show you what I'm talking about. <sighs> Fucking so Wow, he made it look a lot easier than it is, holy crap. I told myself I might have to get the katana out for this, but turns out I don't need to. Fucking son of a bitch. Get it. Ah! This is what I'm talking about here. See these little dark swirls? That's a no-go. I can taste the, the lackluster workmanship in it. But look at the ratios here. You see an awful lot of brown fudge in here and not a whole lot of peanut butter cups. I, th I don't think I'm the only fat guy looking around when I bite into moose tracks and go, I see peanut butter cups on the packaging not tasting a whole lot of peanut butter cups in here. It is like, you know when you get the uh, bold party mix of Chex Mix? And on the front of that packaging, they show off those beautiful like pumpernickel chips or whatever those are. And so then you start digging in there and they have like four of those fucking things per bag. Four pumpernickel chips. This is the bold party mix equivalent of ice cream. In it, I'm fixing it. We're making our own. I'm assuming you guys are just clapping at your computers right now, going like, yeah! Stick it to the man. Underdog stories. That's what Food Network wants. Underdog stories. They want a host that's brave enough to just stick it to the entire ice cream industry. Oh wait, there's one right there. Look at that little bitch. Oh my God. And the rest of this is garbage. That was it. It's like when you get one of those king cakes and you have to find the baby in it. Into the dumpster! I know you're asking right now, like, how, how the freak do you make your own ice cream? I thought, I thought that was an industry secret. I thought chilled dairy products were like, a, a, you know, a man couldn't do that in his own home. I thought that was against the law. Let me tell you something, don't tell anybody. 
But really, you just uh, you make uh, milk cold. That's it. <laughs> it's really not that much of a secret. It's not that hard either. Now you can do it two ways. You can do it the way I did growing up where you get the big drum thing and then you fill it full of uh, rock salt and ice and then you put your ice cream in it and it churns it slowly. That way's fun, you know, as you're having a slip and slide in the backyard at your fifth birthday party. Or you can do it the newfangled hipster way with one of these overpriced KitchenAid mixers and their little ice cream attachment. Now to the guys at Food Network, the executives are watching this right now, applauding me for being this brave. I want you to know that very much like a, a head chef at a restaurant, I have formulated my own recipe for ice cream. The first thing you'll need is 500 milliliters of cream, heavy whipping cream, if you're one of those Food Network executives, I want you to skip past the next, put on your earmuffs, cover your ears. Okay, so for the regular audience out there, I actually just stole this recipe from some lady on YouTube. I'll put her video in the description. She's like this nice little grandma, and, uh, and she just made ice cream, and then, and then I stole the idea. <laughs> so 500 milliliters of cream. The fuck is a milliliter? Uh-huh, looking good. And you take this, and you put it into a mixing bowl. And I don't know about you, but every time I pour any dairy product, I give it a sniff to make sure it's not uh, spoiled. I have a severe distrust of dairy products. What can I say? Then, 250 milliliters of 2% milk. And you quickly pour it so that your audience doesn't see that you mismeasured. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Oh, here we go. Next, you need three-fourths cup of sugar. Ooh, it's bubbling like a cauldron. That's a good sign. When the reaction starts talking back to you, that's how you know it's good. Kill me. Followed by a pinch of salt. I didn't really know what a pinch was, but the lady just kind of like did that, so. And then you're supposed to whisk it. And uh, my, my, this is a thick concoction. The milk has the consistency of, uh, you know the milk after you're finished eating Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Which I'm talking about like before they changed that shit to whole wheat or whatever. General Mills changed all their, their cereals to whole wheat. And they kind of took some of the sugar out of them, you know? But uh, if any of you 90s kids remember the old Cinnamon Toast Crunch, or if you've wondered why, hey, maybe I got nostalgic glasses on. Let me go try some of that cinnamon toast crunch I remember having. And you take a bite of it and you're like, this tastes like fucking cardboard. Like what, why did I like this? That's why. They fucked up the recipe. It used to be so light and airy. You'd take a bite and it was, it was like chewing nothing at all. And now it's like <laughs> I just woke up. I'm trying to get a sugary snack, not like a jaw workout. You end up looking like fucking Henry Rollins by the time you're chewing that stuff. Your jaw is so taut and muscular. All right, according to the sacred texts, we now sit this bad boy in the fridge, let it chill, get really cold for about 20 minutes, which I think is ample time to go mourn the death of the recently departed Dakota Sky. Let's go. <sighs> All right, by this time, your concoction should be nice and chilled. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna go grab it out of the fridge and, uh, and you start mixing that shit up. Oh, I guess I should be able to plug this in, right? Let's reach, that ain't gonna reach. Hold on, I gotta go get an extension cord. Probably should have prepared for this. This is the most unprofessional shit I've ever done, I'm sorry. Do I have an extension cord in here? Oh, lo and behold, I do not. Because somebody buys exclusively indoor extension cords. Here you go, I found one. This is my biggest pet peeve, is when people buy, my wife does this, she buys indoor extension cords. 
These are extension cords that don't have a ground. You know the little ground, the, the, the third one, the third hole? She's a two-hole gal. Nobody likes a two-hole gal. Three. Use the third hole. Simple as can be. It's only a couple bucks extra. You know? The whole extension cord thing got me all bamboozled. I forgot. You gotta go, go get your concoction. Oh, yeah. You check to see if it's chilled with your pinky. Cold. Tastes like melted ice cream. Then you go out here and you get your damn... You get your KitchenAid mixer attachment. All right, you turn it on stir. Start pouring in the goods. And the cold basin will reduce the temperature and start forming ice cream. At this segment of the cooking show, one of two things will happen. One, the lady will mag magically pull out a pre-prepared uh, ice cream concoction that's like, here's the finished product. I didn't prepare for that. Or they take this downtime to uh, share little, uh, little details about their life as if like anybody gives a shit. I see all these videos out there on Instagram of, of moms teaching their kids, uh, baking with their kids. And they're like, hey, let's bake some shit with the kids, with our KitchenAid mixer, it'll be a fun time. Kids love the cookie dough and everything. This shit is just a vertical lathe. Have you guys seen what a lathe can do to a human body? If you guys want to have nightmares, if you want to puke, go to Google, turn off safe search, and Google lathe accident. And then look at what a lathe is and turn it vertically. That's what a KitchenAid mixer is. And people are letting their kids stick their hands and shit around these things. Dude, this thing could mangle your hand in a second. Oh yeah, that shit's thickening up. I think uh, this is uh, about the sort of consistency that I think is all right. I don't know, it's not an exact science. Plus, after we're done with this, we're just gonna package it and put it in the freezer after I taste test it. So I think it's pretty much there. Now is where you add your ingredients. This is the most American shit in the world. Does it take too long to unwrap one Reese's? Well, here, you can just buy a bag of unwrapped Reese's, you, you fucking animal. Eat it off the ground, I don't give a shit. The bag even comes where you can, you can staple straps to it and then just put it up like a, like a feed bag for a horse. I don't know how many to do. I'm just kind of doing it based on eyesight, but I can assure you I'm putting a hell of a lot more in there than that stupid uh, Briars or whoever made that shit. Make sure to not get your fingies in there. Every spoonful should have one. This is like when people make trail mix and they say they have cashews in there, but then there's never like many cashews. There's always like 98% peanuts, uh, a raisin or two, and then one cashew. Jesus. Try to get all this off of here. Look at all those freaking beautiful buttercups. The buttercup quota is way up on this. Whoever made this, oh, he's like the Robin Hood of the ice cream manufacturers. Okay, now I'm gonna take this, put it in the freezer. That'll harden up more in the freezer. And there's still a little bit extra in here. I'm gonna give it a little taste. That's good. I wonder what my dinner guests tonight are gonna think about this. Let's get some testimonials. But wait, there's more. You go looking through the ice cream section, they got every fucking combination under the sun and none of it's good. All right, there's very obvious combinations that I think nobody's paying attention to. So I'm doing another batch, I'm gonna cut it in half. I got two different ideas here. By the way, just two of the many ideas that could uh, be incorporated into a long 10 season show on the Food Network. Something to consider. Start this bad boy up. We go ahead and just pour it in. And then we can formulate our plan of attack. Okay, I got a couple things here. First of all, 
Nutty Buddies. Tell me, having a Nutty Buddy crushed up in some vanilla ice cream wouldn't be the shit. That, this one is just a no-brainer. My next combination is so freaking bougie. Some of you are just gonna be baffled at this, okay? Because ice cream, if you go down the ice cream aisle, you'll see it goes from like bottom of the barrel, like briars and stuff, all the way up till you get to like uh, the Ben and Jerry's, like the, the nicer shit. Now the problem is the nicer shit gets weird. They start putting like raspberries in their ice cream. Who the fuck eats raspberries? Just because it gets more expensive doesn't mean you need to use weird shit in your ice cream. So I have formulated a plan here. We're gonna do, I ate some of them, so the packaging's open, but uh, a Ferrero Rocher ice cream. And we're gonna add a little bit of stank to it. You know, the thing that I was talking about earlier that's always skimped out on, I found some cashews in the pantry. Why not? They're, uh, they're lightly salted and roasted cashews. Salt was sweet with one of the most expensive candies out there. It's a recipe for success, I think. We're having problems here. I don't think the basin is cold enough to make the ice cream. It's kind of there. It's almost there, but it's, it's too slushy. This thing just ain't, it ain't got the colds. It ain't cold enough, you know? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop, I'm gonna prep ingredients, and if it's still struggling by the time I'm done doing that, I'm gonna chuck the whole thing into the freezer and let it sit for 30 minutes and then bring it back out, pop it back on the old mixer. I'm gonna start with the Nutty Buddies first. Oh wait, look, there's like little segments in them. <laughs> look at that, perfect. I already know that's gonna be good. This one, this one's the question mark. Like, is this too much? Is that too rich? But this is gonna be, this is gonna be a childhood favorite. Uh, me and uh, Nutty Buddy Incorporated are gonna take over the world with this recipe. This is insane. What's funny is, is Abby, when I told Abby I was making this video, she comes at me with this bullshit. Fellas, you'll be on my side instantly. But she's like, are you, are you just making this video so that you can get out of this diet I've put you on? Can you believe the gall? <laughs> no, of course I didn't. That would, be, that would be selfish. I have a passion for ice cream, woman. Don't you know that? I think we're good. I don't think the ice cream is thickening up anymore. I think it's lost all of its coolness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, uh, when I picked that thing up, I could hear it sloshing left and right. Everything, it's a double walled basin. And in the middle is just some sort of liquid. So I'm gonna let it freeze up a little bit. In the meantime, I'm gonna watch some SpongeBob and eat a Nutty Buddy. Oh yeah, it's uh, looking pretty good, but it's also like soft, like you can stick your finger in it. There we go, that's more ice cream like. We're gonna take a good, hunk of this and put it in here. All right, I'm gonna start with the non-experiment. I think this one's just gonna be a solid slam dunk. I'm gonna start with the Nutter Butters. Just gotta toss them in there. Um, this one I think is a no-brainer. Kids, dogs, elderly, uh, mentally infirm. Everybody will enjoy this. This is a snack for everybody. Uh-oh, we might need some more Nutter butter pieces. This is lacking in nutter butter pieces. My whole complaint was that they skimp out on the expensive stuff and then I go to make my very own concoction and lo and behold, I fucked up. Look at that. It's so, there's so much in every spoonful. It certainly needs to get colder though. Pure, this one, hold on. Dude. Holy shit. Dude, reformat the fucking hard drives. Delete the files. This is fantastic. I'm having an internal squabble. Make the video or send a, a, a business email to Nutty Buddy Incorporated. 
It's like a fucking match made in heaven. That's good. That's good. I'm saving. That's my crowning achievement. <clears throat> I don't know if this one's uh, going to be good or bad. I've decided to take these Ferrero Rochers. This is my bougie one. I've decided to take these Ferrero Rochers and segment them, which is just a fancy way of cutting them in half. And then I'm going to quarter them. How about that? And chuck them in there. I need to hurry up because my dinner guests are going to show up like in the next 20 minutes. And Abby came home for her lunch break and she said, if the house still it has lighting equipment, cameras, and a fucking standing desk in the middle of my kitchen, when I get home, when I, she's cooking Mexican food. She's like, if I come home to cook and you have all this shit in the way, she said she would take away my, my vagina privileges, which is a strange thing to threaten someone with that has an auto blow AI that he purchased with his podcast money. They say the single biggest liberator for women was the birth control pill, you know? And I think the single biggest liberator for men was either the fleshlight or the auto blow AI. I haven't decided yet. I don't think the cashews should get chopped. Those are just going in raw dog. Get in there. Oh, this is way too soft. This is too soft here. This is gonna have to toughen up out there in the fridge. Can't be bad. That's good, but at the same time, I don't know if I'm cheating. Cause it's like, like a homeless man could, could put a Ferrero Rocher up his asshole and then poop it out on my tongue and it would still be delicious. It's a Ferrero Rocher. That's good, but it's not a match made in heaven like the Nutty Buddy is. The Nutty Buddy is just, that, that, that was maybe my peak of genius right there. Now my question is, is how do you think the wafer is gonna hold up in the ice cream? Is it gonna get soggy? Is it gonna lose its crunch and crisp? These are important things to consider. All I know is it's been a long day in this kitchen. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna re-churn my ice cream tomorrow and I'll give you guys a, I'll give you guys a big follow-up. But as for today, I'm at it. One complete day of ice cream making, two days of ice cream critiquing and consuming, and three pounds gained in total. And after all this, I've come to my conclusion. The Moose Tracks was a failure. It had nothing to do with the fudge. It had everything to do with those stupid uh, butter cups that Reese's makes. There's something about them. The ratio's off. The chocolate to peanut butter, maybe they're too sweet or something like that. They're soft. They feel waxy. They're gross. I think the ones that are in moose tracks are maybe like dark chocolate or something like that. You bite into those and it's like a little, a little savory treat in the ice cream. But the one in my version, it was like, you, it was just this big sugar ball. It was nasty. It was gross. Uh, it didn't turn out, even though it had the best, like classic ice cream texture out of the bunch, it was the worst hands down. Now the Nutty Buddy one was fucking ridiculous. All right, me and my wife fought over who got to eat that one. The wafer didn't get soggy over the next two days. It was it was just absolutely primo. And the final one, the Bougie Ferrero Rocher, it turned out better than expected. Uh, once it actually like froze up a little bit and then I re-churned it so it had more of an ice cream texture, it was fucking mwah, on par with the Nutty Buddy, I might add. I'm, I, I'm baffled, I'm baffled. I've been in the ice cream game three days, already churning out Grand Slam hits. And I think at this point, the only thing left to do is to uh, sign the contract, you know? So Food Network, if you could go ahead and draft that thing, uh, I want a buttload of money. I want to meet Guy Fieri. Uh, you know, I want that job where like, what was that guy that died? I, where he like traveled the world and ate food. That seems like a job I could do. I'd be perfect for that. Give me that job. Anyways, have your people get in contact with my people. And we'll work so I don't have any people. And for the rest of you, you know, say your goodbyes. Because this is the last time you're going to see this face. I think I got this job in the bag. 
if I if you see another video from me, that means I am an utter failure. I'm so unstoppable, uh, and you confuse this obstacle. I'm trying to heat up and melt like a popsicle. I tell them anything's possible, especially when I'm toting on the tropical. And I make you say sorry when